Hi, everyone. So again, yes, I'm Paris, and I'm a PhD student at UC Berkeley at the Sky Computing Lab. Um, I'm here today to discuss Skyplane, which is our approach to mitigate data gravity bottlenecks in the cloud today. So Skyplane, Skyplane is a system to provide high throughput and low-cost bulk data transfers between regions in a single cloud provider and between regions across cloud providers. It's an open source project that's available also at skyplane.org. To illustrate just how painful working with large data sets in the cloud is today, here I use AWS's uh, CLI, which is under the hood calling their API, to move data between cloud regions. And we can see, uh, as the transfer continues, I'm able to achieve a transfer throughput of just 20 megabytes per second between regions. And so if I attempt to transfer a 70 gigabyte data set, at this speed, it would take over an hour. And so when applications operate in cross-region or cross-cloud environments, the performance is drastically worse. And so this is the first component of what is generally termed data gravity. This is the idea that the cloud today operates as a sort of hotel California. You can check in your data into a single cloud region, but it's very difficult to kind of move it and check out. The second component of data gravity in the cloud is high egress fees. So the cloud charges anywhere from 9 to 19 cents per gigabyte to move data uh, over the internet. And these fees also apply even if you're moving data within a single region or between regions. Inner zone traffic can cost anywhere from 1 to 2 cents per gigabyte, and cross zone traffic can cost more. And these costs end up rivaling the cost of compute in the cloud today in many cases. So for an application that's deployed across GCP and AWS, the cost to move a 70 gigabyte data set is equivalent to running a 34 node cluster for an hour. So in light of these two problems, that is slow transfer speeds and high egress fees, how do we solve the data gravity problem? This is really important because for emerging applications like Sky Computing, and you had seen the, uh, perhaps the Sky Pilot talk on Monday, um, as an example of this emerging use case or bamboo, this is a really important factor that we have to solve to make these applications viable. And so what is Skyplane? Uh, Skyplane is a system for fast and low cost uh, transfers between object stores. So we have open sourced this uh, as a package uh, that anybody can install in five minutes, and they can run Skyplane CP with any S3 Google storage or Azure blob source, and then any corresponding object store destination. And so for any source or destination, Skyplane will find the highest throughput and lowest cost path to route the data to move it between these two clouds. At a high level, Skyplane works by first profiling cloud networks. So we periodically probe cloud network throughput to understand how clouds engineer traffic, route it, and where they apply points of throttling uh, or congestion. Second, we study um, centralized IOP-based planning to find the optimal transfer path. So given this profile, we find it's remarkably stable, and so we do centralized planning to find the optimal transfer plan at maximum throughput and minimum cost. And lastly, we execute this topology by provisioning ephemeral gateway VMs from this plan. And so this is all wrapped up into a relatively seamless CLI tool. In the context of Sky Computing, which was a paper from Scott Schenker and Jan Stoika at Hot OS uh, last year, uh, we consider this Skyplane system as the inner cloud broker for data transfer. So as users that operate in multi-cloud environments need to move data sets, they can communicate with the Skyplane service and state their intention. And the, inside the Skyplane service, there's a service catalog which has this map of the cloud wide area network with associated performance and cost data. And it attempts to then pack user demands to that inner cloud network map. And so we have an optimizer that then finds the min cost and max throughput transfer plan, which is then executed over Skyplane clusters. And so we have support for AWS, GCP, and Azure in the paper. And since then, we've added support for IBM Cloud and on-prem clusters. So the net result here is I, I run the same data transfer using Skyplane, and you'll see it's solving for the optimal transfer plan and the optimal route between uh, these two different cloud regions. And it's going to provision ephemeral gateway VMs. It's only going to take a little bit more. 
And so under the hood, it's transparently optimizing for the location and parallelism of overlaid gateway routers. And the transfer begins. And we'll see that once it gets up to speed, it will begin transferring that data set at 32 gigabits per second. So this is dramatically faster than the performance you get with out-of-the-box cloud provider uh, tools. And this is, again, just within AWS. But the performance across clouds is also substantially improved. So to understand how we can optimize the performance of internet transfers between clouds, we want to first study why is the direct internet path between clouds often slow. One common reason is that uh, there can be congestion along the direct path. And so for internet transfers that traverse shared resources, like, say, transatlantic uh, network cables, uh, these resources often run at high utilization and therefore will have some amount of congestion. We often also find that cloud providers may have poor peering. And even if they do peer with each other, this peering only occurs at very specific discrete locations and isn't universal. There can also be packet loss at the physical layer. And perhaps most surprising from our research, we find that uh, some cloud providers, notably AWS and GCP, heavily throttle egress flows from their clouds. And so for tenant uh, applications running these clouds, you need to be aware of the throttling limits imposed by the cloud providers. So one of the key insights we leverage to mitigate this is overlay routing. And so to motivate this, consider a transfer of a data set from the Dubai region in Azure to the North Virginia region in AWS. The direct path here will achieve 1.8 gigabits per second of network, tra uh, tra uh, network throughput. But if I take the indirect path instead via the Mumbai re uh, region in AWS, I can achieve 4.6 gig uh, gigabits per second. So this is a substantial performance improvement in aggregate by going through a longer indirect path. So this is uh, fairly surprising, but it turns out this is actually a classic result. And overlay routing, um, days back in this case, we took a lot of inspiration from resilient overlay networks, paper at SOSP in tw uh, 2001. But then what is novel about how we apply this then in a cloud setting? When we start to apply classic overlay routing in a cloud setting, we find that there are several key challenges. First, we encounter a novel problem space. And what happens is in the cloud, you have to pay for all network traffic per gigabyte. And so you pay per unit volume, not for peak capacity. So consider this two settings where I have two different uh, routing topologies or paths where I send data in one case at you know, one megabit per second for 40 days, and in another setting I send it at one gigabit per second for just one hour. Surprisingly in the cloud, these two schedules should cost the same or else held equal. Versus in a traditional network, you would pay for the peak capacity that you had to provision. Uh, in addition, you have to pay per second for VMs in the cloud. And so for these transfers, these resources no longer should be considered um, to kind of be free and actually should be considered to be highly ephemeral. And second, there's a new solution space here where in classic overlay routing, the set of overlay locations and the parallelism of uh, network resources available at each of those uh, locations is considered to be static and fixed. But in the cloud, we have elasticity. And so we can vary the location of nodes in our overlay routing graph and the number of VMs at that region. And so this gives us a much richer solution space to explore to find better solutions. One very surprising result we found is that, remarkably, egress speeds between clouds are pretty stable over a day-to-day -day period. And so here this trace shows the throughput between different pairs of uh, cloud regions leaving AWS and GCP on the right. And over the 24-hour period, you'll notice that the uh, mean throughput is remarkably stable. And so what this then means is that centralized planning is feasible. So we can aggregate this throughput information and then find efficient overlay routing paths subject to this uh, throughput graph. The second insight that we leverage in Skyplane comes from the observation that many clouds actually throttle egress speeds. And this was pretty surprising to us. But if you look at this, AWS here is uh, perhaps the worst offender. In this case, look at this graph of throughput versus round trip time. And you'll see they have throttled all egress traffic from any VM in AWS to 5 gigabits per second. And this applies in both AWS to AWS transfers as well as AWS to other clouds. And we'll notice that GCP also throttles network traffic, but only does so in an inner cloud setting. And so in light of cloud provider uh, throttling on the network, we now have to use parallelism in order to achieve higher throughputs. And so you'll see in the overlay example I show uh, on the graph there on the left, 
Before, we would, be, we would have been throttled to just five gigabits per second because that's the network throttling limit imposed by AWS. But on the right, we can see that we can dynamically vary the parallelism of resources in order to break past this throttling limit. Another smaller observation we leverage in our work is that we find that it's actually really important to carefully tune the number of TCP connections to maximize good put. This is inspired by classic techniques like grid FTP for high performance data transfer in HPC environments. We find we have to be very carefully consider VM and NIC level limits in order to achieve good performance in the cloud. So, for, so, so far, these techniques address the performance of data transfer in the cloud, but to cut the cost of data transfer, we also introduce dynamic optimizations for network tiering and compression. So some clouds like GCP and Azure offer up to 40% egress fee discounts if you leverage hot potato routing. But this comes at the cost of degraded network performance. And so Skyplane is able to then utilize hot potato routing and utilize overlay networking to recover the performance degradation to achieve substantial cost savings. And this is with no effort from the user. One thing I also want to note is that all of this is feasible with absolutely no cooperation from the clouds. So the way Skyplane works as in practice is the user will run a Skyplane command on their laptop, which will use their cloud credentials and public VM APIs and networking APIs to provision VMs in the cloud. And so in this case, in AWS and in Azure. And everything runs within the customer's uh, VPC. So in some sense, this is only using the public interfaces documented by the cloud and therefore is something that can be deployed incrementally today without any cooperation uh, from these vendors. So it's also open source, and it's available at skyplane.org, and you can get started. You can pip install it um, and run a transfer within five minutes. So how fast is Skyplane in practice? We consider an end-to-end -end comparison here against cloud provider uh, vendor tools. And so if we first consider AWS DataSync, which is AWS's recommended tool for bulk data transfer between AWS regions. And so we can see in, across a variety of different tested sources and destinations, we are up to 4.6 times faster, and this is for AWS to AWS transfer. So there's, this is just within one cloud provider without transiting outside AWS. I want to note here also that at the time we wrote the paper, uh, DataSync did not support any inner cloud connectors. We also benchmarked against GCP data, transfer, GCP data transfer, which is also GCP's bulk data transfer product. And we are up to 1.8 times faster for intra-cloud transfers, but up to five times faster for inter-cloud transfers. Also, uh, here in this setting, GCP doesn't support egressing to destinations outside of GCP. So they only support moving data, say, from AWS to GCP, but not vice versa. Uh, lastly, we considered AZ Copy which is Azure's bulk data transfer tool. And so here we observe that Skyplane is uniformly faster than AZ Copy. Um, we notice that the gains are a little bit smaller here, and that's because AZ Copy leverages running compute inside Azure Blob storage service. Here we compare against uh, resilient overlay networks as a baseline. And we've implemented uh, resilient overlay networks routes within Skyplane for a fair apples to apples comparison. And so what we find is that we can uh, capture a 1.3x speed up at up to 30% lower egress cost when compared to RON. We can also carefully visualize now the cost and throughput space uh, when we start to kind of trade off uh, performance for cost when running network transfers in the cloud. And so here we show the throughput speed up on the y-axis and cost increase. And we show this for three different source and destination pairs. And what I want to note here is that Skyplane can achieve substantial improvements with minimal cost increases from the use of overlay. So we achieve a 4x throughput improvement for just a 20% cost premium here, um, if you look at the uh, Azure to AWS line in green at the top here. Skyplane is open source, but I also set up a dashboard for our, the conference here to let anybody play with the optimizer and see actually what the performance and the schedule uh, slash routing topology will be for any given source or destination. So you can punch in your favorite source cloud and source region and destination cloud and see what the Skyplane optimal routing topology would have been. We open sourced this project last year under the, under the Apache 2 license, and we've been really happy to see the rapid adoption of the project among the community. Um, and so this problem of data gravity is a really common pain point by many users of the cloud today. 
So far, we have seen up to, uh, we are approaching half a petabyte of data transfer to date using Skyplane from a wide set of organizations. And we have a large set of users and contributors as well on the project. At Berkeley, I also want to thank the rest of the Skyplane team. So the project has continued to grow since uh, kind of our initial effort um, with many PhD students, postdocs, and undergraduates. So to wrap up, Skyplane is a system for high speed and low cost data transfer uh, between regions in a single cloud provider or across cloud providers. And so it's an open source project and we're actively soliciting feedback, use cases, and collaborations. And you can also get set up in five minutes by using the tool. Just pip install Skyplane and, you can, and uh, it can be ready to use. Um, and also please feel free to email me if there's any questions, but I'm happy to answer any now.